CO, and welcome to beautiful Lake Ted Killer. Here we are nestled just a little ways down the road from Cherokee Nation headquarters, right here in the Cherokee Reservation at Cherokee Landing State Park. Whether you live here or you don't live here, one of the most important things is family activities. Uh, to Cherokees, gathering, fellowship, fun, and, and taking these things, that, that is what it is to be a Cherokee, but that's also what it is to be a family in, in America today, and that's why we feel it's so important right here at, at Cherokee Landing State Park that you can come, you can enjoy, you can take these, this time to relax, to reset, to reboot, if you will, your life so that you can make the best of the times when you're away, but that's why it's so important here that, that people, and especially in nowadays times, when, when we've been through so much, but we have so many opportunities right here in the Cherokee Nation Reservation to get out, to get away, and to get back what it was to be when we were kids. Take our kids on, on a trip or an adventure and show them what it was like to be a kid when we were, when we were growing up. One of those main things is when I was a kid, I used to come to this lake all the time. We, you know, you, you look, you've got 25 miles of shoreline from here to there. You've got marinas, you've got boating, you've got skiing, you've got jet skiing. Well, while we're here today at beautiful Lake Ten Killer, let's talk about how this lake came about. And it was during the early 1950s that this lake, uh, you had a lot of rural communities where electricity was something that was, that was needing to, to be a part of this. So they, they decided to flood this area uh, to take that to use for electricity and, and it's said, and it may, it may be well known to some and maybe not so well known to the other, but this lake is named after a Cherokee family that once lived here in this area and so forth. But as you look at this uh, lake, you'll start to notice that the clarity, the depth of this lake is very uncommon. So this gives you many opportunities just besides boating, the camping, the hiking, the fishing, You've got great scuba diving opportunities here and, and some of the best around the area around the dam where there was once an old school, there's an old school bus that they talk about where many people go and they visit. So many people have cut their teeth right here when they start to get into that scuba diving and going on those family vacations off maybe somewhere else. But we want to bring people back here to this area. We want, we want people to, to relive their childhood, relive their family's history that was here and, and start making the, that new history with their kiddos, taking them down memory lane because when you look up and down this shoreline, you've got about 25 miles of shoreline here. Marinas, you've got, once I said before, you've got all the camping, all the boating, but at these marinas is some of the best known restaurants in the area to come in, dine, and take that family experience and then and have something to share with your grandkids when they come along. While you're visiting Lake Tenkiller, you may also want to take some time to enjoy the Cookson Hills. The Cookson Hills are a rugged area covering parts of Adair and Sequoia counties and the southern portion of Cherokee County. Ridges covered by heavy oak, hickory forests make the zone a haven for depression era criminals like Bonnie and Clyde and Charles A. Pretty Boy Floyd. That lush cover also makes the Cookson Wildlife Management Area a short drive from Lake Tenkiller a perfect place to observe and hunt wildlife. The wildlife management area stretches across both Cherokee and Adair counties, and the main entrance is located in Bunch, Oklahoma. And of course, the lower eastern shore of Lake Tenkiller here in the Cookson Hills has a boat and paddleboard rentals, along with a store, cabin rentals, and motel and restaurant with waterfront dining. Plenty of options for you and your family. So while we're here today in the Cherokee Nation Reservation, Let's take a look at the 84 mile stretch known as the Cherokee Hills Byway. This is a national scenic byway that virtually starts around, around I-40 and ends up in Natural Falls in Delaware County. Now, so much to see. You got the lower Illinois around in Sequoia County. You've got a, a lot of trout fishing and different things. You cannot, uh, you can't explain the beauty. It's something that you have to see when you go up to the Natural Falls area. But I'll tell you, the folks in Cherokee County they may tell you that they've got the sweetest little spot of this byway right here nestled off of Highway 10 and Highway 82. Along that Highway 10 and Highway 82, when you're taking that drive, you cannot miss the Illinois River. So when you take a look around at where we're at today, we're sitting right here off of one of the unique access points of the Illinois River. And you'll find that as you go up Highway 10, there's several different spots. Find the one that best fits you. It's kind of like skinning that squirrel. There's always a way that's best for you and there's always a spot that's best for you and your family. Come down and enjoy the scenery. Come down and enjoy the fellowship with the others that are around. Now when you're here, you're gonna notice that there's several spots to go camping, to go hiking, 
and you'll find all the entrepreneur spirit that you see everywhere else within the Cherokee Nation Reservation alive and teeming right here on the Illinois River because there's several spots that you can rent these kayaks, canoes, and rafts to take that fun church visit, to take that fun family visit, and float that Illinois. Now when you're cruising up and down this, this Highway 10, and you'll take notice, maybe you're about midweek on Wednesday. You'll look, the river is probably at its prettiest spot because it's basically it and its own natural habitat. Maybe not that many floaters. Now on the weekend, a holiday weekend or just any weekend in that summertime, you're gonna see this place teeming with individuals coming from far and wide and typically most of the time you'll have a pretty good college crowd of kids here and it used to back in the day I spent quite a bit of time maybe a little bit too much time out here on the river but that's okay because we all we all learn a lot of things down here and one of those most important things that we can learn is how do we conserve the beauty of what of what the Creator has given each of us today and, and in those conservation efforts whether it's recycling whether it's coming in and making sure that we have the proper wetlands Cherokee Nation is proud to support all those conservation efforts along with our partners at the state and particularly the Oklahoma Wildlife Department to where when you're looking up and down a place where the Oklahoma Wildlife Department may have an impact is down at the Sparrowhawk Camp where you can find all sorts of trails, all sorts of hiking activities and all sorts of camping opportunities. So I tell you what folks, if you just don't know what you want to do, take a drive, head out, start down this way come up and down this river and maybe it's just a, an adventure to, to kind of scout it out or maybe you know exactly where you want to go. Nonetheless, come out and enjoy what the world has to offer here in the Cherokee Nation Reservation in Cherokee County. One of the things that I want you to always remember as we come down and we visit the river or we visit our lakes, we visit our parks, we're camping, we're hiking, we're having fun and fellowship let's go back to mother nature and let's do a helping hand and take care of those things that are around there let's look at conservation efforts let's look at efforts that are used to clean up these things and I think you know there's many communities around and I, and I know there's an association called tidy up 10 killer if we can look at to them and their volunteers and show us a road map on how that we can keep this place beautiful I think it'll be best for for us today and it'll be best for the next seven generations the small community of Briggs is a real gem for visitors looking for the natural beauty of Cherokee County and Cherokee culture. In the 1940s and 50s, the Sequoia Indian Weavers Association building in this community was a hive of activity for Cherokee women and men learning to weave textiles for income. The work that came from such community centers was widely known for its artistry. The Cherokee Baptist Association and Campground and the associated Cedar Tree Baptist Church are long-standing institutions of faith among the Cherokee community. The Baptist Association re recently celebrated 150 years of fellowship in both Cherokee and English languages. In addition to the cultural offerings, the Briggs community area includes the Pumpkin Hollow Scenic Drive along the Illinois River and the Nature Conservancy's J.T. Nickel Family Nature and Wildlife Preserve, located in a forested, rocky pocket of the Cookson Hills. And directly east of Briggs is the community of Eldon, a quiet corner that once had multiple shops, a cotton gin, and the Lane School, which counts Cherokee National Treasure Dorothy Ice as an alumnus. But to the south is the scenic Barren Fork Creek. A tributary of the Illinois River, Barren Fork Creek passes close to Park Hill. It's well known to river floaters and anglers and most accessible in Adair County near Welling. There are a number of residents in the area, so the area is best accessed by rafters upstream on the Illinois or in Adair County. Welcome to the Cherokee Springs Golf Course. We're here where we have 18 holes and nearly 7,000 yards of some of the finest golf you'll find here, especially in Cherokee County. It's a place that we're quite proud of and if golf is one of your pastimes we definitely have several options for you including this one right here where we're standing today. Whether your favorite pastime is golfing, whether your niche is camping, hiking, trail riding, or any of the boating activities that we've seen today, I want to thank you for coming along this journey with us and you may just want to get on that Cherokee Hills Byway, take a trip, find out what's best for you, what's best for your family, but always we have plenty to offer and there's special things for each and every one of us. One thing that I want to recommend for everyone is while you're out, please follow the laws, follow the guidelines, and let's be good stewards of Mother Earth's land. Let's put back what we found. Let's make our footprint as small as we can find 
so that the next seven generations can enjoy everything that we've seen today. So thank you again for coming along with this small sampling of just what there is to offer in the Cherokee Nation Reservation, specifically in Cherokee County. So wadon to everyone and thanks be to God. OCO and welcome to the 69th annual Cherokee National Holiday. I'm here in historic downtown Tahlequah at the Cherokee National History Museum. Whether it's your first time to visit the Cherokee Nation Reservation capital or you have many occasions to visit here, I invite you to look around at the beautiful historic sites and museums that we have to offer. Historic downtown Tahlequah is rich in Cherokee history, language, and culture. Immerse yourself and enjoy this beautiful setting. Tahlequah became the capital of the Cherokee Nation in 1839, but Cherokee presence in this valley dates back to the 1820s with the arrival of the old settlers, Cherokees who left our ancestral homes in the southeast before the signing of the 1835 Treaty of New Echota. Settling first in Arkansas and later in Indian Territory, these Cherokees hoped to escape the pressures of white encroachment on Cherokee lands by immigrating west of the Mississippi River. The subsequent forced removal of Cherokees remaining in the east, however, brought change to the area, and the valley around Bear Creek, now called Town Branch, was transformed. Downtown Tahlequah still resounds with Cherokee history and culture. It's everywhere if you know where to look. Street signs in both Cherokee and English languages are some of the most evident clues of our identity and our place. In 1821, a Cherokee blacksmith, artist, and merchant introduced his Cherokee syllabary to the people. Sequoia created a written language for the Cherokee people that revolutionized our nation. Within a year, 90% of the Cherokee people could read and write the syllabary, a remarkable feat of literacy. Our language and syllabary are still with us, and you can find it all over the Tahlequah community, including here at the Cherokee National History Museum. Let's make a quick visit inside this historic building. The Cherokee National History Museum opened in 2019 in the historic Cherokee National Capitol Building on the Tahlequah Town Square. It was originally built in 1869 and housed tribal government offices and Cherokee Nation Supreme Court until 1907. The building was returned to the Cherokee Nation and a massive restoration effort began in 2013 to transform this treasure into a center of tribal heritage, timeless art, and a place to showcase the Cherokee experience from time immemorial to present. Visitors interested in the Cherokee language will enjoy the new exhibit, Sequoia, an American icon, on display throughout this year. This exhibit is part of a year-long commemoration marking 200 years since Sequoia introduced his syllabary to the Cherokee people. The syllabary can also be seen in exhibits throughout the museum and historical text in the upstairs galleries. If you're visiting Tahlequah, please make time to visit this beautiful museum. By the way, while you're here visiting the Cherokee National History Museum, stop in at the nearby Cherokee National Supreme Court Museum, the Cherokee National Prison Museum, and the nearby Cherokee National Peace Pavilion, which commemorates an 1843 intertribal peace gathering called by then Principal Chief John Ross in an effort to build peaceful relationships and unity among more than 18 tribal nations. The Peace Pavilion, as well as the Prison and Supreme Court Museums, are all a short distance from the Cherokee National History Museum here in downtown Tahlequah. Education has always been important to the Cherokee people, so it's no surprise that after our forced removal in the 1830s, we rebuilt Cherokee society here investing in education. We founded the Female Seminary. It was originally located a short distance from here in the Park Hill area of today's Cherokee County. After 35 years, it burnt down and we rebuilt it, the building that you see behind me, the 1889 Seminary Hall here on the campus of Northeastern State University. Now the Cherokee Female Seminary was the first institution of higher learning for any woman of any race west of the Mississippi. After statehood, the state of Oklahoma took ownership of Seminary Hall, but today through a partnership with Northeastern State University, we are helping refurbish this magnificent building and this testament to Cherokee Nation's commitment to education. If you look around NSU's beautiful campus, you can see all sorts of signs and symbols of Cherokee Nation's greatness and our commitment to education. 
The Cherokee Nation also built an institution of higher learning for men on a piece of land just a few miles from the Northeastern State University campus. Although the buildings no longer stand, the memory of the Cherokee Nation Male Seminary remains today. Cherokee Nation's fitness and recreation center, Marcoma Gym, was built on the property where the Male Seminary, one of the first institutions of higher learning west of the Mississippi River, once stood. Proposed by Cherokee Nation Principal Chief John Ross in 1846, the seminary's alumni list includes Cherokee Nation Principal Chiefs Joel B. Mays, W. W. Hastings, and J. B. Milam. Clement B. Rogers, a Cherokee Nation Senator and Judge and the father of Will Rogers, and Houston Teehee, former U.S. Treasury Register, among others. Tragically, the male seminary was destroyed by fire in 1910. Today, Cherokee Nation uses this property to promote the health and wellness among Cherokee citizens, many of whom come here to participate in physical activity classes, nutrition programs, and recreational leagues. While we're talking about the proud history of educational institutions in the Cherokee Nation Reservation, we'd be remiss not to talk about Cherokee Nation Sequoia High School, which began as the Cherokee Orphan Asylum in 1871 to care for Cherokee children orphaned by the American Civil War. The first building on the current campus was constructed in 1875 after the original orphanage in Salina burned to the ground. Today, Sequoia High School is operated by Cherokee Nation and continues to thrive as a beacon of education for Native students after 150 years. Welcome to the grounds of the Cherokee Heritage Center. In 1963, the Cherokee National Historical Society was founded with an important mission, preserve generations of history for generations to come. And the Cherokee National Historical Society accomplished that mission. But in 2020, we began a new chapter in the history of this institution. Deputy Chief Warner and I proposed to the council and the council approved a measure to take ownership of these beautiful grounds and to return the collections to the Cherokee people. And so now we look forward to improving this facility. We're undertaking a strategic plan for the future of the Cherokee Heritage Center to build a world-class museum and research institution. What an historic place we're at. You can see the columns from the original Cherokee Female Seminary. You can sense the history that's on these grounds. While the Cherokee Heritage Center remains closed as we develop a strategic plan, we've developed a temporary site for the Cherokee National Research Center at Cherokee Springs Plaza. It's officially open. It will hold some of Cherokee Nation's most priceless, irreplaceable artifacts and historical documents. Thanks to the state-of-the-art environmental controls and measures to protect these treasures, we've taken the first steps to ensuring these items are preserved for future generations. We're also making these records and artifacts accessible to citizens, artists, and scholars for research. The center has controlled areas to view manuscripts and objects as well as dedicated space supporting genealogical research. The John Roche Museum is a short drive from the Cherokee Heritage Center and is located in a restored schoolhouse. This museum examines the life and leadership of one of Cherokee Nation's most famous historical figures. John Ross was principal chief of the Cherokee Nation from 1828 until his death in 1866. His time in office included some of the most critical events in Cherokee history, including the Trail of Tears. Visitors can also explore the use of Sequoia syllabary in the Cherokee Nation's language preservation efforts through the exhibit Cherokee 101, Cherokee Language Preservation in the Classroom. This exhibit details the tribe's efforts to preserve and perpetuate our language and the culture it reflects. Outside the museum, guests can also visit Ross Cemetery, where Ross, several of his family members, and other dignitaries are buried. A short drive from the John Ross Museum, Hunter's Home is the only surviving pre-Civil War plantation in Oklahoma. George Murrell, who married into the Ross family and accompanied them to Indian Territory during removal, had the home built in 1845. The site is open for scheduled guided tours of the Greek Revival style home and a glimpse of private life among the Cherokee elite in the pre-Civil War Indian Territory. In 1843, the Reverend Thomas Berthoff built Riley's Chapel on a hill south of the Cherokee capital. Then in 1844, the first annual Indian Mission Conference of the Methodist Church was held at the chapel. More than two decades later, in 1868, the building was raised. Although Riley's Chapel was demolished, the D.D. Etchison Memorial Methodist Indian Church here in Tahlequah succeeded Riley's Chapel. 
Today, D.D. Etchison Methodist Church includes Cherokee and Muscogee hymns in its service and counts Cherokee Nation citizens as a significant portion of its membership. Deputy Chief Warner and I want to thank you for allowing us to be your tour guides through the capital city of the Cherokee Nation. There's perhaps no better place for us to conclude our tour than the W.W. Keeler Complex. It's the formal seat of the government of the Cherokee Nation. Throughout this building, you'll find symbols of Cherokee language and culture, including wonderful artwork. We hope that you can come visit the Cherokee Nation capital city of Tahlequah. In the meantime, visit our website, visitcherokeenation.com.